everybody, thanks for tuning in to check out this removal video. This was a customer's house that had a yellow jacket nest inside of his closet ceiling. This is a walk-in closet, so I had a lot of room to move around, which was nice compared to the last closet video I did. Um, so they started to notice that there was a stain on the ceiling. This was literally just the drywall paper and a little bit of paint that was holding up this, uh, um, holding up the finish on this drywall. So they were noticing a lot of adults inside. So he started. To, he just kind of taped over the um, the perforations in the drywall, and. Uh, so when I came in, there was definitely a lot on the ground. Uh, there were a lot around the window. There's probably about 40 of them. So I just did my first thing, just kind of getting the, the tape off that he had put on there. And literally just paint was left on that ceiling. So they had chewed pretty much all the drywall away, even the paper. So you can kind of start to see them there. They were... Uh, they were... Uh, they were pretty much aware about that hole being there and started flying out pretty much immediately. And I had my, I had my keyhole saw here, but um, I didn't really need it. I mean, I could just pull most of that down with my fingers. It was so soft. So people ask in the comments how a nest like this starts, and what will happen is in the spring, a foraging queen, which is the only adult from this colony that had started the colony will be floating around looking for a new place to make a home and this type of species this species makes nests in cavities so they, they she'll suss out a, um, a nice dark spacious cavity to, to start her nest so she found a place like this by flying around the upper part of his house and found a nice little gap between the brick and the, um, the siding and she went in there and explored and said, this is a good place to, to make my home. So immediately she goes out, starts getting some paper. And um, by chewing, well, you saw my previous video, by chewing on fence posts and things and coming back and starting to build her nest. So one queen started this whole colony at the beginning of spring. So this nest probably would have started mid to early May. Um, again, started by one wasp. So this had about, I think it had three layers, three nice flat pancake layers, and it was, uh, it had a lot of adults. It probably had about 1,000 to 1,500 adults in it. Nice sized nest. So you can see there how the drywall is like just maybe a third of its normal thickness. Right up to the, um, right up to the, the ceiling rafter. It's funny though with this species when you when you go to grab the colony or grab the, the comb, they'll they'll latch onto my glove and I think at one point I, I show it but I don't know if I zoomed in too much you can't see it but I show my finger and it has like like eight adults that latched onto it and uh, so I just kind of suck them off at the vacuum but see right there. So what happens is when they sting the glove, their stinger gets stuck in the glove. Their stinger's not barbed or anything like a honeybee, but it's it just because the glove is, is leather. Their, their stingers get stuck and then I just pretty much just hold my finger right against the vacuum and suck them right up. When I was up there doing that, it looked like I could just reach up and just grab it and pull it right out, but it was, um, it kind of went back into the wall a little bit. Not into the wall, but back into the, above the wall. And um, so it was a lot, a lot bigger than it looked like from that hole. So I kind of had to really like jerk it and wiggle it out because it was latched on some insulation and stuff back further into the ceiling. You see that? It's what? One, two, three, four, four layers thick. And there's actually a fifth one up there you can see still up in the ceiling. nice and heavy. It was packed full of larva, so it had a lot of weight to it. Probably five, five to eight pounds, somewhere in there.
The weirdest part about this job is reaching up in the cavities like that. You, like, I can't really see very well in the veil, and you're just really trusting that the glove and the sleeve is going to protect you from the gamut of stings you're going to get. And people ask him when I, when I do these removal videos why I'm not being swarmed and how this species must be docile because they're not swarming me. Well, that's just, that's just not the case. See, what happens is when I'm doing these removals, especially in a room like this, there's a big light to my left, a big drop light. There's a light on my camera, and there's a light coming from the window that's right next to me to my right-hand side. So when I pull this nest open, when they fly out, they are like inundated with stimulus of light stimulus so they go right to the, to the drop light or they go right to my camera light or they go right to the window for the most part they go to the window for the natural light so yeah they'll come at me and they'll, they'll go at my gloves they'll go at my veil but they really just want to get out and they want to fly and so if I was at the entrance way then yeah they, they would fly right at me and whatnot but it's kind of like this is like uncharted territory for them. They don't really know where they are. So they fly out of that hole and they're just like, well, where are we? You know, and then they, they, they fly to the window and that's where I actually suck them up at. You'll see a little bit later here in the next few seconds. Um, I'll show the window and you see them flying up along the, the window panes trying to get out. Spray a little bit of the uh, misting black flag. That's just flying insect spray. It's not really specific for wasps, but um, it works really well for swarms. So I kind of spray that up in the cavity, so any returning foragers will will get hit with that. And you can see here, there's some pouring out of the coming out of the woodwork, literally and figuratively. See here, they're going towards the window. They they try to get out, so they're they're. They don't really fly around the room randomly. They fly right to light sources, and specifically um, daylight sources, i.e. windows, door windows, whatever. This wouldn't be a removal video if you didn't hear my phone beep while I was doing a voiceover. So. <laughs> and of nothing important. So this is the catch. It's a decent sized nest. It's yeah, it's, it's uh, it was nice and heavy. It was uh, definitely a, a single season, but it was a good sized one anyway. These girls have been busy. So something I fail to do usually in my videos when I do inside removals is to show the room and the activity inside the room after I, I pull out a nest out of a wall or a ceiling. So I'm trying to get, trying to remember to do that more, just because people ask a lot about like why didn't I close off things, why didn't I do that and this, and why did I let them fly through people's houses? And if it's in a closet like this, I close off the bedroom door. In this case, it was a walk-in closet, so I was I was able to close off the closet door and, and have all my gear and stuff inside. But for the most part, I close off the bedroom and uh, and leave like a curtain open to a window, so that way when the adults do fly, they fly right to the window and then I suck them up from there. But I do a thorough sweep of the room too, just to make sure that there aren't any adults nestled in anywhere. Where are these chickens? Calling. Yeah, take your time. <laughs> Why I was calling you? What took you so long? Huh? What took you so long? I know. I know. Well, is everybody hungry? Have you brought your appetite, everybody? Uh huh. Okay. Let her have some. 
bald-faced hornet larva. Come on, somebody eat that adult. That's it. Get it. Good job, Ginger. Good job, Ginger. Get it. Get it. Good job. Down the hatch. Hi, Tiggers. Hi, Tiggers. Hi, Tiggers. Hi, Tiggers. Name it, tell you about. Oh, Tiggers. What a panther. Hey, Tiggers. Hey, Tiggers. Hey, Tiggers. Lay down, Tiggers. That's it. He has a magic tail when you pull it and lays down. It's a good sized nest. Lots and lots of larvae in this nest. Lots of adults hatching in this nest. Pretty much all the ones after I sucked this up, they started hatching like immediately. So after I get these nests home and I have them in my Rubbermaid bin, I kind of pull them apart and vacuum up the adults that are in between the comb. And there's a lot in between the comb. As you can see there. So some of these are new adults that they don't fly. But then there are some here that are um, that they're seasoned adults that, are, that would have been foragers or whatever. So you, get, you just have to be extra careful. Because I don't have my suit on here. I just have gloves on. And uh, they could fly out and potentially sting, but for the most part when they fly out of the bin, they're, they're, they do a couple like orientation flights around the bin and then they, they fly off into, a, into the tree behind me. So underneath this one's where most of the workers were. Bam! <laughs> Look at all of them. And I'm just batting them down because I'm trying to fly out so I smack them down and then suck them up with the vacuum. I think two or three of them got out, but that's not bad for as many that were in there. But they always go to the underside, so if you flip it over, they'll go to the other side. And if you flip it over again, they'll go back to the other side. So they keep looking for the dark space. Thank you. 
One of the nastiest smells you ever smell. Just a day's catch. Alright guys, thanks so much for watching this video. If you guys enjoyed this, please drop in the comments, let me know what you think. If you have any ideas for future videos of things you'd like to see or hear me talk about, drop them in the comments, let me know. Um, if you're a new subscriber, thanks for tuning in and checking out my videos and subscribing to my channel. If you guys are existing subscribers and coming back, I really appreciate you guys coming back and checking out my content and just commenting on my videos and let me know what you think. The crowdfunding campaign is still going on. You guys are awesome for donating what you have. Um, if you'd like to donate something to my channel, I'll have the link in the description for my crowdfunding campaign through GoFundMe. You guys can click on that link and head there. I appreciate any donations you guys can offer. Um, if you'd like to support my channel in a different way, you can share my videos and that helps generate more foot traffic to my channel and also helps me with ad revenue and things like that. Thanks you guys so much for watching this video and I'll catch you on the next one.